Hey guys, my name is Frank. This is the Poth on programming video log and today I'm going to show you the bare minimum in my opinion of how to get an indexed database up and running and use it to get information from your database and save information to your database and create a new database when you need a new database. So I made this little application. What it does is it saves the background color and the number of clicks to these buttons. As you can see down here, I'm incrementing the number of clicks and I'm going to save that. And I'm also going to save the date, the last access date of this application. So the last time I open this application, that's going to be saved to my database too. So the cool thing about this is, say I select red and I have 21 clicks. When I come back to my page after page refresh, it's no longer going to be that default blue and zero clicks. Now it's going to be red and 21 clicks because I saved all that information to my database. I do have a violation error here. It's not an error, it's just a warning. It's because I'm, I'm launching uh, prompts or alerts from inside of my event handlers, which is not good practice, but it's useful for the purposes of this example, so just know that. The other thing that this application does is it allows me to delete my database. So keep on watching, and I'm gonna show you how to save data, retrieve data, create a database, and delete that database, not in that order. Okay, so here's my code, my HTML. Everything is in the index.html file. I'm not gonna go over the CSS because it's not important at all. Um, not gonna even go over the HTML too much besides the fact that these are my buttons here. And it's just really simple, an h1, a p tag, and the script tag, which holds all of my JavaScript for this application. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a request to access my database called indexed DB. This is what I'm calling it. But you can call it anything you want. So if I go in here and I call this, well, I'm not going to do that, but I can call this just my DB, or I can call it whatever I want. But I'm not going to do that because I have this reference in another place. Really, ideally, you want to store this name in a constant variable so you don't have to keep track of all the places that you use it. But basically, you create a, a request to open a database. You hand it the name of your database that you either want to create or access if it already exists. And you also hand it a version number. Number. So my version number is 1. I can't put a 2 in because I don't have code to handle upgrading to a new version right now. I don't cover that in this tutorial. So I'm just going to stick to 1. If I do choose 2, basically what's going to happen is it's going to throw an error. So you could not open index.db due to error undefined. And in my console, it's going to say an object store with that specified name already exists because it still is detecting the database from version 1, and it doesn't know what to do with this version 2 because it doesn't exist. And it's there's another database that's the same. I don't have code to handle upgrades. So I'm just going to go back to version 1. The only thing you really need to know about that is it's a whole number. You can't do 1.1. You can't do 3.2 or 7.678. Can't do that either. It has to be a whole number. So just remember that when you're using your version numbers. I think it's kind of a pain, but, you know, really the only thing it interrupts is convention. So now I'm going to go over the events that you're going to need to do this basic example here. So you're going to make your request and you're going to attach event listeners to your request. So you're going to have to handle the possibility of an error event firing. So to do that, you just basically do this really simple event handler here. You just want to tell your user, hey, IndexedDB couldn't be opened. You're not going to be able to save data. It's good to know if your user is going to be putting in a lot of information that they're going to want to save. Because they're not going to want to do that and then see an error code that says could not save your data. That would be really annoying. But that's not really too complicated or important, so I'm just going to breeze past that. The two really important ones are the upgrade needed and success event handlers. Upgrade needed actually fires first. If I come over here and I delete my database here and I refresh my page, you're going to see first creating a new database. And that's because I have this alert down here that says creating a new database inside of my upgrade needed event handler. And the reason this fires first is because when I make that request for my database, my index hyphen DB database, it's not going to be detected because I just deleted it and it's going to have to create a new one. So what this callback does, what this event handler does is it creates a new database 
or a new data store inside of my database called data. And it adds a default object inside of it with that default blue background, the default date not found message, and the default press is equal zero. So if I come over here and click through these prompts, I'm going to get my default blue background, my default presses being equal to zero right there, and my default date not found right here. So let's go over this in a little more depth. So what's happening here is my request is returning, is firing an event, upgrade needed because the database doesn't exist yet, and it's going to return a result. This dot result is equal to a new database object, and I'm going to want to create an object store inside of it because the request couldn't find anything, so it's going to create a new database, and I'm going to store an object store inside of that database called data. And I'm going to tell it to just auto generate keys for objects that I store inside of it, which is pretty handy. I'm not going to go into that because I don't know a lot about it, but do your own research on that. There's a couple different properties you could pass to this create object store method here. But for now, just know that auto increment basically just automatically generates keys for objects that you insert into the data data store. You can call this whatever you want to. It doesn't have to be data. So next, after I get my data store object, data, I'm going to want to add a default object to it. So my default object is just going to be this object right here with a color, date, and presses property list. So basically, I just store my default colors. I got this default blue, got the date not found, and the zero. And I'm going to store this object at the index save data. So when I want to access this object again, when I want to get this object out of my database, I'm going to use the save data key in order to find it inside of my data data store inside of my database. Explaining all this to me sounds like I'm explaining it in a really clunky way, like it's not very clear what's going on here. And that's probably because I just started working with index DB. So hopefully you guys are understanding what I'm saying. And hopefully I'm not saying it wrong, but I strongly suggest you check out the documentation for this. And basically what I'm trying to do here is give you source code. So go down to the description and go to my GitHub and check out this source code because everything works here. I'm just, I'm new to this, so I don't want to miss explain anything or explain anything the wrong way. But basically what you're doing here, you're getting the database returned by your event. You're creating an object store called data. You are telling it to automatically generate keys. And then you're going to add an object with these properties to your data store with this key for use in lookups. All right. Complicated, maybe. But after you use it a couple times, I think you'll get used to it. And it's it makes sense when you think about it. So... So now I'm going to do this one more time. It's going to create a database that's handled inside of my upgrade needed event handler. And it's going to successfully open that database if everything goes smoothly. So where that happens is inside of my success event handler. So this is a success event handler here. And this is where you're actually going to get your database to use in your application. So I have my database variable, which I defined way up here database. And I'm going to use this variable to reference my database throughout my application when it's running. So now I'm going to go back down here to my success event handler, and I'm going to store my database, which is inside this dot result inside of my event handler. I'm going to store it in my database, and I'm going to use that. So we're going to get some data out of the database that we just created in update needed. And we're going to save some data to it, namely the date. So the first thing we need to do is make a transaction. So think of a database just like a bank. Anytime you want to put money in or take money out or you know put data in or get data out, you need to make a transaction. So with the transaction, you just want to specify the object store that you're going to make a transaction in and the method. So read write. Read write is good if you want to read information or get information out or put information back in. I'm going to do both in this case, so I'm going to use read write. 
Then I'm going to get that object store called data and I'm going to store it inside of storage. So I'm going to basically just get the object store data and I'm going to, I don't know, I guess this is kind of like adding a flag to the object store to, to let the database know that, hey, I want to make a transaction on this object store. So think of this like this. I'm getting the object store data. I'm going to make a transaction on it and it's going to be a read write transaction and I'm storing it inside of the storage variable. So now I can do stuff with my storage variable, which represents that data object store. Stuff like get, for instance. So if I say storage.get and I hand it a key, that save data key that I use to define the location of my object that I created, here we go, see that key save data? That key represents the location of this object inside of my data data store or object store. So now I can actually manipulate that object with all those default values in it. So inside of this success handler for that storage.get method, I can actually get information out of my database by using this dot result, which now represents the object referenced by save data. So I'm going to get the color, the date, and the number of presses out of my object inside of my data store or object store at the save data key. And I'm also going to add or change that data and save it back to the database. The one I'm going to change is the date because every time I access my page, it saves the date. So if I come over here and I refresh this, when the success event fires, and you know it fires when it says successfully open database because I'm calling this alert function from inside the event handler. So when you see this, you know it successfully created a database and it's gonna save the date to the date value inside of my database. So when I come over here and refresh my page, it's now going to show me the last time I visited the page or the last time that success event fired, which was apparently 1136 AM and, you know, four seconds. So to access data, you have to add this success event listener to the get method. And to get that information out, you use this dot result. And that gives you access to all the properties inside of the object stored at the specified key and to save data back in. You basically just use storage.put and then you put the result back into the location specified by the key, which was save data. So basically anything you change, so this.result.date, I'm changing that, I'm setting it to a new date object, and I'm using storage.put to put that change date back into the database at the specified key. So pretty simple. I know I repeated myself a lot there, but just trying to get the point across as many different ways or multiple ways repeating myself, I guess, is my way of trying to get that information across to you. Because I had to read this stuff a bunch of times and fiddle with it a whole lot to get it just into my head. Really what you want to do is take this code from my GitHub page and look at it, tweak it, mess with it, and just figure out how it works for yourself. Anyway, those are the three event handlers that you need. You need the error, the upgrade needed, and the success for creating your database. Down here is just code that handles the logic of my application. So basically what I'm doing here, I'm creating a buttons variable, a background variable, and a presses variable. Buttons is just going to be a list of all my buttons on the screen. Background is just going to keep track of the background color. Uh, press is just going to keep track of the number of presses. So if I press this button a bunch of times, just going to keep track of that. And then when I refresh the page, all that stuff will be saved and it'll come back up. So basically, I'm just going to I'm going to loop through all my buttons here. I'm going to add click event listener to oops, I'm going to add a click event listener to all of them. I'm going to leave that there, too. And inside of that click event listener, I'm going to do a couple different things. First, I'm going to check to see if the button pressed was the X button, because if it is the X button, I'm going to run this code right here, and that's going to delete my database. Now, this is actually easy enough to explain, because deleting a database is really simple. All you do is say window.indexeddb.delete database, and then you hand it the name of your database. So if I come here and I press this button, all this code runs. So what's happening here is... 
I am going to hide my buttons. I'm going to hide my button container by setting the visibility to hidden. I'm going to change the text inside of my H1 element. That's why this text up here looks the way it does. I'm going to change the content and the color to the selected background color. And I'm going to change the background color of the page to just white because that actually hides all my text. All my text is still here. It's kind of a cheap example, but it works for what I'm trying to do and show you guys how to use index DB. So basically, if I hit the X button, this stuff happens, and this is what deletes my database. So that's really the only important thing you need to take away from this section. Down here is if I hit any of the other buttons. And I also check to see if the database exists just in case the user is using a browser that doesn't support indexed DB. So any, any older browser might be at risk of not supporting this. But if your browser does support it, this basically, this block here takes care of all the red, green, and blue buttons. So basically when I press any button, I'm going to change the background color, or I'm going to store the background color of whatever the button's background color is, or whatever, yeah, I'm just storing the background color of the button inside a background. I'm going to change the background color of the document. So I click the green button, background color is going to change to green. And same for blue and red, obviously. Then I'm going to increment up the number of presses that goes on. I do that here and I store that number of presses or I change the output in my HTML for the number of presses right there. And then finally, I'm going to make a transaction, kind of like I did in the success event listener or handler. And I'm going to make a transaction on the data object store. I'm going to make a read write transaction. And I'm going to get that object store data with the transaction flag on it. I guess I'm just going to call it a flag. It might not be the way it works, but that's kind of how it works. I'm going to get the data object store with uh, in transaction mode read write. And I'm going to store that inside of my storage variable. Then I'm going to tell that storage value variable to get the object at the save data key. And I'm going to add a success event listener. And when that fires, I'm just going to execute this code. So this dot result stores that object, that default object that we, we created that stores the color, the presses, and the date. I'm going to update the background color and the number of presses. I'm going to leave date out of it because we only update that at the start of when we open our application. And then I'm going to save that data back into my storage with the put command. And I'm just going to save this dot result back in to the object store at the save data key. So hopefully that makes sense. And that's it. That's basically it. Really all I showed you guys how to do was how to create a database, how to delete a database, and how to get information out and how to put information in. And there's a lot of different ways you can get information out of a database and put information in. This is just one way you can do it. I strongly suggest you go ahead and look at the documentation online for indexed DB. It's actually really useful and there's a link up here in the source code just to the docs page on Mozilla. So go check that out. Anyway, this is just my little example of how to use index db it was mostly for my own edification but hope you guys got something out of it too if you did learn something like the video subscribe to the channel i'm going to have more videos coming out and also comment down below if you think i could be doing anything better if you want a more in-depth explanation of of anything i'm going over like give me give me your input give me your feedback because i want to make these videos as helpful as possible obviously so i can help people actually learn how to code but anyway that's it. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Come on back now and I'll see you next time.